Good morning, Rutherford County and everybody else that's listening. We're very, very glad that you're with us this morning. We want to just share with you some things that God's really been showing us in our hearts, things that he's been working in our hearts. And when he works in our hearts, he changes us. And we're very grateful for that because every time he changes us, we get closer and closer to living in his presence all the time. I want to start out with a a scripture in Isaiah chapter 30. It's verse 18. And really the whole chapter of Isaiah 30 talks about the rebellion of Israel. And really there's rebellion in all of us because we were born with a sin nature. And until Jesus comes on the inside of us, we're sinners. So Isaiah 30 talks about the sin in the Israelites and also us. But in verse 18, it says, And therefore the Lord earnestly waits, expecting, looking, and longing to be gracious to you. Therefore he lifts himself up, that he may have mercy on you, show loving kindness to you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed and happy and fortunate and to be envied are all those who earnestly wait for him who expect and look and long for him, for his joy, his peace, his matchless, unbroken companionship. That, to me, speaks a lot of my life and really our life together also. I was, uh, I've been on the program before and gotten to share, and it's been a real honor. But I wanted to say, I was born in Bethesda, Maryland, and we moved when I was younger, different states and everything. Um, I moved to Clearwater, Florida in 1973, and I met Gary in St. Petersburg in 1974. We got married, and we had three children, and we moved to Crystal River, just north of St. Petersburg, in 1978. And we both worked in a print shop that his mom and stepfather had. We had our children there. I had them in school there, and I really wanted to start getting them to a church. There was really a desire in my heart to be in a church where I could learn about Jesus and teach my children about Jesus. And we went to different churches down there in Crystal River. It was a small area, but we never found one that really had what we were looking for, what we expected. And I wanted to start with... Uh, a scripture that I had that really uh, what we're going to be sharing about is how God uh, picked us up and uh, moved us. Uh, like she said, we were working at a print shop that my, uh, actually it was to, my stepfather and I had begun this print, this particular print shop that was eventually going to, would, would eventually be my my business but uh, we worked on it together but anyway the first the scripture I want to start with was uh, John 15 and it's 14 through 17 and uh, it reads you're my friends if you keep on doing the things I command you to do I do not call you servants any longer for the servant does not know what the master's doing what he's working out but I have called you my friends because I have made known to you everything that I've heard from my Father. I've revealed to you everything I've learned from Him. You have not chosen me, but I've chosen you, and I have appointed you, and I've planted you that you might go and bear fruit and keep on bearing and that your fruit may be lasting, that it may remain, abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, as presenting all that I am, he may give it to you. This is what I command you, that you love one another. I I was born in Ohio and uh, was brought up in the Lutheran Church. I went into the Air Force in 1964, and I uh, spent one year in Texas uh, in training, and I lived in Germany for two years, 
And then my last year in the Air Force was spent in uh, Da Nang, Vietnam. After I got out of the Air Force, I lived at home back in Ohio and worked there in Ohio for several years. And my mother and stepfather had moved to Florida and he had started a, a little print shop down there and was having some uh, health problems. So uh, I was at the time I wasn't doing anything, so I moved down to help him out. And uh, that was in uh, Treasure Island, Florida, which is basically a part of St. Petersburg. So Lisa and I met in St. Petersburg, and uh, we, uh, we uh, got married and began a family. And uh, she, once we had children, she began to go to church. We hadn't gone to church uh, previously. Uh, but uh, she began to take children to church. But I, I just, after uh, all my travels and time traveling around the, the world, uh, I, just didn't, I just didn't want anything to do with church. So I just stayed home and I'd watch uh, evangelists on on TV. But uh, after a lot of encouragement from her, I began to uh, go occasionally go to church with her and the children. And gradually, uh, there was one particular church in Crystal River that uh, I I began to get get involved in. But. Uh, it's suddenly the pastor. Uh, we had a, we had built a Christian a, a Christian school, had our own building and everything that we had built, and everything seemed to be going pretty well. But suddenly the pastor closed the Christian school. Uh, very suddenly and without really, we just didn't understand why. And a few weeks later, he closed the church. Uh, it was it was quite a quite a shock to all of us. Uh, the uh, uh, a lot of people would come to Florida during the winter months. We called them snowbirds, and there was quite a few of those people would come to that church. And so the first two weeks uh, after it was closed. Uh, I would go early, and uh, I wanted to see if there was anything posted on the church explaining what had happened, and there was not. So I would meet the people as they came and try, even though I didn't have any answers for them, I'd just at least let them know that the church was closed, and uh, didn't I didn't understand why. But... Uh, I... Uh, It, it was a hard time. It was a very hard time. We were really involved in the church and in the school. We had women's prayer groups. We had seminars. We had a lot. And I was, like I said, very involved in the church, got close to a lot of people. It was devastating to a lot of people. It was devastating to our children. They were in, in grade school, um, and it was just a really difficult time. And then even in the midst of all that, uh, the pastor got uh, to the local newspaper and told them that we weren't supporting him, and that's why he left town. And it was just, it was hard. And because of working in the church and everything, there were a lot of people that called my phone constantly at my house that just didn't understand. They had problems. Um, they didn't know what to do. They had situations that they didn't know how to handle. And And I remember that also put a major cry in my heart because I wanted to help them. I knew them, and I had grown to love them, and I really wanted to help them. So we had to find a, a school for our children. It was during the winter break. We had to find a school for our children and get them enrolled. There was just a lot that was going on at that time. We went to, we went to other churches in the area, but we just couldn't find one to meet the hunger. I know that was in my heart, and 
and I wanted something very stable. I wanted something with a good foundation for our children also. So we just kept searching and searching to find a church that, that would teach and live the reality of God. That's what we wanted. Soon after this, uh, we met uh, Robert and Marcia Lowry through some mutual friends. And uh, they, they became aware of our, of our situation and decided to, to start a church. So Robert would preach to us and uh, he would always start by saying, you need to have a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus. And that was, that was new to us. And it was also new to us to have someone that would be so genuine and... Uh, he really cared. Uh, yeah. And, and also that they would, you know, they would uh, live a daily life. Their daily life was what they preached. And that was, that was new to us. Uh, Robert and Marsha was affiliated with the uh, Word of Faith Fellowship in uh, Spindale. And so we began to go, uh, especially Lisa and their children, uh, go to seminars that they were they were holding in North Carolina, and I would go as soon as I got enough vacation time and, and time off, then I also would, would go to some of the seminars. Um, but uh, Lisa, God had spoke to Lisa and the children that uh, we were to move to North Carolina. But uh, I had I mentioned the, the print shop, and like I say, the uh, the original concept of that print shop was, uh, I had, uh, we my stepfather and I would jointly uh, build this business, and then eventually it would become mine. So I had actually worked for seven years, uh, helping to build this this business. And uh, one morning I was shaving, and uh, I heard the voice of God. It's loud and clear. And uh, he said, who are your friends? And I thought of two that worked, worked with me in the print shop. But at the same time, I was trying to think of more. At the same time, even as I was thinking of them, uh, I began to think of faces and see faces of people that I had met when I had been up here on seminars. People I didn't even know, I didn't know their names or anything, but I, I was, began to see all these faces. And I, I thought, that, that's, that's really, he's trying to tell me something. And I, I realized that he was letting me know through that that we were all supposed to move to North Carolina. So uh, I immediately called out to Lisa and said, uh, Call Marcia and see if there's a house available in North Carolina. Which I did immediately before <laughs> he could have a chance to change his mind. Uh, so, uh, the uh, soon after, uh, soon after this had happened, my stepfather called me into his office. And uh, said, Gary, said I, it's time for you to take over the, the business. And uh, not only that, he mentioned uh, the home we were living in. He had purchased a home for us to, to live in that we were renting from him. And it was a four bedroom, two bath house. And he said, I've also made arrangements that uh, you can buy the house for half what it's worth. So uh, here I was, I had, <laughs> I had, uh, you know, worked all this time for this business, and here, there it was. But I had to tell him, I'm sorry, we're moving to North Carolina. So, uh, Lisa, Lisa and the children uh, had, a short time after this, Lisa and the children had gone to North Carolina to a seminar and uh, they never 
they never came back to Florida. So uh, I got a U-Haul truck and packed up the truck and the bird and the hamster and the cat and <laughs> and I moved uh, to North Carolina and this was about in about a month. So uh, we had six hundred dollars. Yeah, I had six hundred six hundred and forty dollars. Uh, and the the house that we were gonna rent was three hundred dollars a month. There was we had they had animals. Uh, they it was their home. They had to uh, go to another state for business and was gonna be gone for a year, possibly two years. And uh, they needed somebody to stay in their house to keep it up and take care of the animals. So the rent was uh, $300 a month. So I had enough for first and last month's rent and to establish that. And then I had $40 left over, which I needed for the, the U-Haul truck <laughs> to, uh, to get, get everything packed up and moved. So... Uh, and this was the time... I think this is the first time that I really began to realize that when God tells you to do something, He's going to work it out. I didn't understand that in my mind, um, and I knew my mind wanted to question it several times, but there was something deep on the inside of me, and I understand it now, where God was drawing us and bringing us here and was going to do a work in us. And it wasn't just for Gary and I and our children. But it was for my family, for his family, for all of those people that we were going to meet, we had met, family members, whatever, that as he did a work in us, that that work was going to be spread to others also. And that was main desire of my heart. So when God said move, I said yes. And uh, it's, it's hard for me to believe, even now, uh, that... It was had to be God's grace that uh, that I was able to tell my stepfather that that I wasn't pulled to to stay there and let them go ahead and move. That wasn't even a that wasn't even a thought. Uh, pretty much, I had just made up my mind we were going to move, and that was it. Um, the uh, I I had mentioned about. Uh, the friends, the things about the friends, and uh, that I could only think of two, two friends that I had there, and uh, here we are. We pick up and move to a, to a whole new start all over. I had no job when we moved here. I had no job, and uh, we were actually the, uh, the building that we have now, the sanctuary that we have now, was under construction. And uh, they needed, I, I wanted to work, I wanted to help with the church. For I told them uh, the general contractor was uh, Chris Carlson, Ray Farmer. And I told them, I said, I'd like to work the church for a week just to, just to for, kind of help out. And they said, well, we really have people, you know, that want to help like that, but we need employees. So we really need somebody to work for us. So I became uh, Carlson Farmer's second employee and full-time employee and we were working on the on the sanctuary and the church buildings. So I didn't really have uh, construction uh, experience but uh, they needed help so I was willing to help. And once we finished the uh, the church buildings and sanct uh, sanctuary uh, then we had Carlson Farmer, was a general contractor. They uh, they had other jobs, and we began to travel around the county, and especially uh, Lake Lure. We did custom homes in Lake Lure, and then other remodel jobs all around. So uh, I worked for Carlson Farmer for 15 years, and uh, then I I went and uh, started working for Josh Farmer who had uh, apartment complexes, and I did maintenance there at his uh, apartment complexes for 10 years. Then uh, I came 
began to work for Josh and Ray again in uh, Freight Works, a uh, uh, trucking company, and which I'm still still employed with Freight Works. Uh, through the through all the the construction and all the work, uh, I met and worked with a lot of people and became, you know, friends. So I, I go back to that time when God spoke to me, who's your friends? And could only think of two. But uh, In Florida. In Florida. But here. But now I can uh, look around and I see hundreds of faces now. And they all have names. And they're my friends. And the work really that God has done in our hearts. And we've been through a lot since we came here. Gary and I have been married 47 years, I believe it is. Um, and we've been through a lot. We went through a lot in Florida. We went through a lot even after we came up here. Uh, the more we really put our stake in the ground that all we wanted was Jesus and we wanted his will, um, we, we had people around us that didn't want the same thing. But we did. And it for me, it put my stake deeper and deeper in the ground. I want Jesus. I just want Jesus. I just want his will. Um, God has gotten us two houses, and at the time that he got us the two houses, uh, we didn't have any money. We, we had bills to pay. We had a lot going on. and But at every point, again, God would speak to me and put it in my heart, this is your house. And he would bring it all to pass. The first house that we bought when we moved here was uh, right after we had come, actually. We'd only been here like a month and a half. And the people we were renting from that Gary mentioned when we first moved here came back in town. He had lost his job, but it, it had ended, and we had to find a house. And I cried out to God and cried out to God. We drove around and drove around. We looked at rentals, but we had no money. So it was just a matter of, Jesus, where do we go? And I went to a realtor, and she had just put a house on the market right down from the hospital on Monfredo Street. And... Uh, we went to look at it, and I knew in my heart it was ours. Um, but there again, I, I don't know how we were going to pay for it, but I just knew God said, and God got us that house. The president of the bank where we got the loan was a friend of the man that was selling the house. He loved us. He worked everything out ahead of time. I don't think we even had to pay for the electricity to be turned on or anything. I mean, God just opened every single door for us. And the house immediately became a house of ministry. We had people in and out. We had people stay with us. We had seminars. We, had, we just had a time where we were beginning to really learn Jesus. I taught in the Christian school at the Word of Faith here, and I loved every single minute of it. I worked at the hospital in the snack bar. I worked at Tanner's for 12 years. And... It's been busy, but I loved it. I've loved every single bit because at every point, God said. And when God directs you to do something, it's the greatest thing. You can't think about it. You can't question it. You can't do anything but just do what he tells you to do. The second house we got, um, again, you know, I had a lot of medical bills. Um, I had had some, some damage done to my eyes. I had to have surgery, so I had a lot of medical bills. We didn't have any insurance. But we stayed to take care of a lady in this one house where we are now. And I really liked the house. But we didn't have any furniture other than our bedroom suit. And we had some things for the kitchen and our clothes. And the lady passed away. And so it was presented to us that we could buy the house. And again, it was, I'm not thinking about this. I felt in my heart that it was God saying that. Um, I went to talk to I had a lot of encouragement from my friends and I went and I talked to somebody about getting a loan for the house and I, I turned on my paperwork in and God had just taught me over the years how to get your credit up and how to keep your bills paid and how to and when God teaches you to do things it's part of your life you love doing it and you see the fruit of it and we did we saw the fruit of it and we got the house we got the loan our credit was excellent we love the house, and again, it's, it's a ministry house, and that's what we want. We want to help others. God's helped us so much over the years, and we want to help others. 
in uh, 2020, when COVID first came out, I had shared before, I had a severe case of COVID. I had double pneumonia. My heart went into AFib. I had sepsis, and I was in the hospital for two weeks. I spent one week in ICU, and I didn't know anything that was going on. I was really pretty much out of it. Um, and it was the point when Gary couldn't come see me, and I, I couldn't even lift my phone to call anybody. But I remember our pastor, Jane Whaley, calling and checking on me. And I, at that point, had my cell phone right next to my head up on the bed. And it was right before I went into ICU. And I remember her praying for me. And I remember her talking to me and encouraging me and telling me, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. And her son, Brock, sang to me a couple of songs. And it was the sweetest thing. And I had such peace after that. I had such peace, went up to ICU. There were things that happened, but nobody knew about COVID or how to understand it or anything. But I came out of that hospital after two weeks alive. And that to me is a major miracle because they didn't think that I was gonna live at all. But I came back home, I got strong, and I love my life. I absolutely love it. To me, I don't I don't wanna plan my days, I don't wanna, think I know what I'm doing uh, next week or the next month. I just want to do what Jesus tells me to do. And I've watched Gary over the years, and he's learned a lot. He's got a lot of gifts on the inside of him. He can do a lot of different things, and it's been a ministry for him um, in any field at all. He's been able to go help people, and that's what living's all about. That's the reality of Jesus. That's where you find living in the presence of God. And that's what we came here for. That's what we want to do. And I wouldn't trade my life for anything. I absolutely love it. And the people we've met are wonderful. It's just, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, God brings people across your path. I've met people out in the county that uh, might come up to me and ask me a question or something. And it's an open door to share with them about Jesus and what Jesus did. People that lost family members with COVID. And I was able to comfort them because Jesus got me through that. That's what we were created for. We weren't created to go have our own life and do our own thing. That's not what we were created for. And when you begin to do what you were created to do and you begin to choose to live in the presence of God, it is the best thing there is. There's nothing any better than that at all. And I know a lot of times I wake up at night and, and I just start praising him. And I just start praising Jesus. And I walk through the house and I start thanking him for the house, for the furniture, for everything that we have, for the friends that we have, for saving my life. It just goes on and on for Gary, for where he works and the people that he works with that are people that love us and they're friends of ours and they take care of us and they check on us. When I came out of the hospital with COVID, I had, we had more food come to our house than we knew what to do with. And that's the way our church is. And that's the way the love of God is. And that's what we always want to have in our hearts. And that's what we live for. That's what we were created for. And do you want to say anything else? I just wanted to read this Go ahead. Uh, scripture. I already read once, but I want to read it again. It's John 15, 14 through 17. You are my friends if you keep on doing the things I command you to do. I do not call you servants any longer, for the servant does not know what the master is doing, what he's working out. But I have called you my friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. I've revealed to you everything I've learned from him. You've not chosen me but I have chosen you, and I have appointed you, and I have planted you, which is what he did. He planted us, that you might go and bear fruit and keep on bearing, and that your fruit may be lasting, that it may remain and abide, so that whatever you ask, the Father in my name as presenting all that I am. He may give it to you. This is what I command you, that you love one another. And that's what we're learning to do. We thank you for joining us today. We're very grateful to be able to be here. 
You can watch any of our programs. We have the website on www.wordoffaithfellowship.org, or you can tune in on WCAB Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8.30 to 9. We love you. Thank you.